I would like to introduce you to Judy Kolditz, who is one of the most influential and respected leaders in the hand therapy community. Judy is a past president of ASHT and the IFSHT, as well as being a clinician, educator, product designer, and entrepreneur. Sally and I are delighted to have Judy share some of her thoughts with us today. So Judy, we have a couple of questions that we wanted to ask you uh, pertaining to, of course, hand therapy. Uh, and we were very interested to find out why and how you developed your passion, really, and we considered a passion for the CMC joint. Well, I, th I think some people might call it an obsession. <laughs> I think it really came from two things. I think one was early in my career, I saw many patients who had CMC osteoarthritis. Yes. And I felt a little lost at what I could offer them. Or, and, and also I felt like I didn't really understand it. Mm -hmm. And then later in my career, having seen many patients in the interim, I decided to create a course on the thumb. And one learns best by teaching yes. because you have to know it and understand it. So I did a lot of reading and investigation. And in order to explain it, I came to a better understanding and really realized how many people struggle because the thumb is so different from any of the fingers in its anatomy and its movement. Absolutely. So I think those two things combined um, really led me to look at the CMC joint in, in greater depth. And it's, it's obvious uh, at conferences that people line up for days in advance sometimes to get into your lectures. <laughs> and I just think that is so wonderful and such just, just so wonderful uh, for you. Um, the other thing that we were very interested in is uh, the Metagrip splint that you developed. Uh, most hand therapists recommend uh, the Metagrip to patients for both conservative and also for post-op uh, management of CMC arthritis. Uh, and we all know how well it works. Can you discuss the anatomic and the biomechanical rationale behind the Metagrip splint for us? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, the Metagrip really came out of uh, a design that I developed during my career using low temperature thermoplastic materials. Mm -hmm. But I was always frustrated because the material itself ends up being rigid once you've made something on yes. a patient. And because of the needed mobility of the thumb, there always seemed to be a conflict there. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to develop this with a manufacturer in the Netherlands and it was really a marriage of my design concept and their knowledge of materials in production. Interesting. And the unique part about it is that most braces or orthotics for the thumb really endeavor to immobilize the joint. Mm -hmm. And yet you immobilize the thumb and you take away a lot of function. Yes. So this brace endeavors to um, stabilize the joint in a very different way. Um, there's a metal piece surrounding the thumb mm -hmm. that you squeeze so that it fits the thumb muscles securely when they're relaxed. Mm -hmm. So imagine then that I'm using my hand and those muscles enlarge when I contract them. Yes. So by enlarging, they, inc they create internal pressure. Mm -hmm. And that internal pressure stabilizes that first metacarpal bone because right. it's the movement of that bone on the trapezium that creates the pain. Mm -hmm. So when I reach out and I pinch, that is when my muscle contracts and that's when I need the support. So it's a term, uh, we, we describe it as dynamic stabilization yes. because it, it, when I just move my hand, Thumb, I can move it. I'm not getting a lot of stability, but when I pinch, I get the needed stability. Hmm. This is actually a, a theory that was devised by Sarmiento, mm -hmm. who developed the concept of fracture bracing. Yes. In order to stabilize a, a, a long bone that is fractured in the middle, he used the concept of wrapping something around the bone so that that muscle contraction, when it enlarged, would stabilize the broken bone. 
Correct. And we're just using the same concept to stabilize a joint rather than a fracture site. And it does work so well. I enjoy using mine on many occasions. <laughs> well, I actually wear one myself. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, while we're speaking about orthotics, we know that orthotic fabrication is really an integral part of hand therapy. What do you think are the critical skill sets required to become a proficient uh, splint or orthotic ma maker? Well, I, I think of two distinct skill sets that are needed. Um, one is basic manual skills the ability to conceptualize from two dimension, which is a pattern, into three dimension, mm -hmm. the ability to handle materials and tools, sort of the make it ability, right. you know, the, the manual skill part. That to me is one, one skill set. There's an entirely another skill set that's required, and that is uh, no, being able to evaluate a patient, mm -hmm. determine when an orthotic is necessary, determine what type of orthotic, how often to wear it, how to integrate it in a treatment program. That's an entirely different skill set, I think. Yes. And, and I see many therapists who may have the clinical skill set, but they may not have the manual one. Mm -hmm. Or they may have the manual one and not the clinical one. So I really think it's a challenge to have both of those skill sets and marry them together in order to be a good clinician um, using custom-made orthotics. Absolutely. I always felt that knowing how to cut with the scissors is the first step. It is the first step. Yep. And, um, you know, I have a background in garment construction. Ah. And if you think about sewing or garment construction, you're taking something that's flat, mm -hmm. which is the same as thermoplastic material, you're cutting out a pattern, and you're putting it together to make it a three-dimensional construct. Absolutely. And and so I think that really helped me be much better at the process because of my experience with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and not everyone has that experience. Judy, you are well known for your clinical pearls uh, series. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our students? Oh, I, I just think being a hand <laughs> therapist is just as fascinating a work as there can be because you can have the same diagnosis in three different patients, but you have three different people. Mm -hmm. So it's endlessly fascinating and it's endlessly challenging because of all the variables that you're dealing with. So I, uh, I regret I'm near the end of my career because I think it's a really exciting time to be a hand therapist because there's so much on the horizon that we're learning that we can do that we really never realized we could influence. Absolutely, in preparing for my lectures for this series, I have learned so much and I'm almost very sorry that I'm retired from clinical practice. But I'm not so sure that I want to go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let the younger ones do, use yeah, all their they, Yes, yeah, they can fight with the insurance companies. Right. So thank you very, very much, Judy. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today, and I'm sure our students will really treasure these, uh, your, your clinical pearls. So thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Best of luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day.